to NATO, the United States has more friends and more allies than any other major power. I don't believe in America alone, just as I don't believe in Europe alone. I believe in America and Europe together in NATO, because we are stronger and safer together. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership. Members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization marking 75 years of the military alliance there, formed as nations recovered from the devastation of the Second World War, seeking to deter future conflict with a clear commitment that an attack on one member would be an attack on every member. Canada was a founding NATO member, but has been facing increasing criticism from its allies for not stepping up on defense spending commitments. Joining us now to reflect on the road ahead for the alliance are Evo Dalder, former U.S. ambassador to NATO, and Roland Paris, director of graduate, the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs at the University of Ottawa and former foreign policy advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Hi to both of you. Thank you very much for making time for this conversation. Ambassador Dalder, I'll, I'll start with you. It's been more than a decade since you represented the U.S. at NATO. On the alliance's 75th anniversary, do you think the members of NATO are more or less bounded together than when you were there? Oh, they're definitely more bounded together uh, than I was there, although they were pretty bound together at that point, too. We were fighting in Afghanistan. Uh, we had about 150,000 troops under NATO command uh, at the time, fighting in seven different uh, conflicts over uh, three different uh, uh, continents. But today, uh, we're back in a, in a way that, frankly, we haven't been since the end of the Cold War. There's a real present military danger at NATO's doorstep. And NATO is stepping up to make sure that that danger does not translate into an act of military conflict that affects NATO, uh, NATO territory. So uh, to be on uh, 75 years old as NATO is today and as strong and united as it is, is a good thing. Doesn't mean that tomorrow doesn't have differences and, and difficulties. But for, day, uh, for today, we're, I think we can talk about an alliance that is steadfast, uh, focused, and ready uh, if and when it necessary to act on its main guarantee of defending every member against armed attack. Professor Paris, to what degree do you think Russia's invasion of Ukraine is defining the NATO of right now? Well, it's, uh, it's clearly given a renewed uh, sense of, within NATO about its core mission, which is the collective defense of the, the, uh, the North Atlantic area. So, as Evo says, I don't think we've seen NATO this united for a very long time. Evo and I were on an advisory group, I think, about a decade ago to the former Secretary General of NATO. And back then, although the, the alliance was still uh, unified, there were questions about what its priority mission should be. There's no question now about what the priority mission of NATO is, nor about the importance of NATO, not just to the security of Europe, but also to our security in North America and in Canada. And NATO has been reinforcing its eastern flank. It has two important new members, uh, Sweden and Finland. And those can be traced directly back to the full-scale invasion uh, by Vladimir Putin of uh, Ukraine two years ago. Ambassador, uh, I take... Professor Paris's point around a lack of kind of questioning of the core mission of NATO. The only caveat to that would be former President Donald Trump, the future, um, the, the future contender for the for the job, I should say, as the GOP's nominee. And I wanted to ask you if you could, for a moment, to just reflect on U.S. The, the U.S. role here, because we did see this week Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of NATO, basically put forward a proposal to displace U.S. leadership in the Ukraine defense contract group with NATO. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me uh, two things. Uh, uh, one, a, a positive thing, which is that NATO is stepping up to do more and helping to help Ukraine uh, and, and, and building that bridge that, that uh, Secretary Blinken was talking about uh, to uh, Ukrainian membership of NATO. And I think that's important. Uh, I think that bridge should be strong, but it also should be short uh, when we get to that point. Having NATO, uh, uh, given NATO a role in the training and in, in, in bringing together the support necessary to, uh, to defend itself is absolutely vital. But there's no doubt that another uh, reason this is happening is because there are growing doubts within 
uh, European circles and among NATO, uh, uh, the, the NATO supporters about the longevity and the sturdiness of American support for NATO. And there's good reason for that. Uh, we all know what Donald Trump thinks about NATO. It isn't positive. Uh, and I think that's the understatement of today. Um, uh, and and uh, should he be elected, uh, it will have a major, major challenge towards Europe. I think Europe is waking up to that reality. I hope Canada is too. Perhaps spending more on defense would help uh, in that regard. Um, uh, but Europe is waking up to that reality. However, and there is a however, uh, public opinion in the United States remains as strongly pro-NATO as it has ever been. We've done 50 years of polling at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. 78% of Americans think they should either maintain or increase the U.S. commitment to NATO. And although the, the uh, support among Republicans is going down, uh, it is still well over 70 percent uh, of republicans who believe that that is necessary so from that perspective from the congressional perspective where there's near unanimity from the public perspective uh nato is strong but there is a dark cloud on the horizon it's not just on nato it may be uh raining on a whole bunch of other parades uh but if that cloud becomes a reality uh we all have to think about how we're going to live in a different place for a different time Professor Paris, last word to you, and it's on something that we heard the ambassador mention, defense spending. Uh, Canada has yet to lay out uh, a plan to reach 2%. Uh, it's the only ally among all the 32 uh, members not to. Uh, do you think that has impacted our reputation in NATO? Absolutely. But more important than that is that we need to have a well-equipped military to assure our own security and to make a contribution to an alliance which is also providing for our security. So now it's true that the Trudeau government has spent more on defense than, his, than their predecessors did, but it's nowhere near enough. You know, 10 years ago, three NATO countries had hit the 2% target. I think this year, something like 18 will, which is half, more than half. And so, you know, there is this defense policy update that we've been waiting for for a very long time. I hope to hear something about that, and I hope that it has real dollars attached to it. I'll leave it on that note. Professor Paris, Ambassador Daldo, I appreciate both of you making the time. Thank you very much.